Hello everyone, and welcome to my shame. Yes, I'm talking about the breaking of my no-buy, in which I bought a few things. But, on the plus side, that just means I get to make a video for all of you. And in this case, it is the Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable collection. All of these things are absolutely adorable. I have been testing each and every one of them out for the last little while, and I, spoiler alert, really like them all. Like, they're all wonderful products. Okay, so from the Stay Vulnerable line, I got four of their eyeshadows. I got one of their lip balms and one of the blushes. In the eyeshadow line, I got the shades Nearly Neutral, Nearly Rose, Nearly Apricot, and Nearly Berry. And let me tell you, these eyeshadows, so good. I love them. I love them. I was very skeptical because they're liquid eyeshadows and I've never been much of a liquid eyeshadow person. I like cream eyeshadows. I've used cream eyeshadows before, but I don't know, for some reason, having a liquid eyeshadow just kind of turned me off when they revealed them. And then I was watching a bunch of different review videos and everyone said that they were amazing. So I was really curious. And it was specifically Mel Thompson's video that pushed me over the edge and made me put these on my wish list um, because the look that she had created with them for her video was just stunning, phenomenal. And uh, I'll do my best to try and create something different for you guys today, but I can't promise that it's not gonna look very similar because that's generally the look that I've been going for with these and I, I love them, I love them so much. So moving right along, we're gonna do the eye look first. Now I'm not wearing any other base makeup today because I do quite like how these products look just without anything else on my skin. So I opted to not put any base makeup on. If there is anybody who wants to see specifically the blush using it on top of foundation or anything like that, let me know in the comments below and I can put that as like an Instagram story or something um, for you to see what it looks like on top of foundation. But for myself, I like my preferred method of applying this blush is on bare skin. All right, so I'm gonna start with Nearly Rose. I've already primed my eyes. I do tend to like to use primer with these anyway. I haven't tried without primer, but I do like to put eye primer on using these as well. I do it with every eyeshadow. Okay, so we're gonna go in with Nearly Rose. Just on the inner portion. I'm gonna take my Morphe M330. and just blend that through the inner corner, through to the middle of my eyelid, taking it up and into the crease as well. Just blend that out as best as you can. I really like the blendability of these eyeshadows. I did not expect them to be as blendable as they are. Actually, I'm gonna, let's zoom you in. Oh shoot, I hope I haven't been blurry this whole time. Okay, so there's on one eye done. I'm gonna take a little bit on the other eye now. This one says ne nearly rose, but it's a lot more peachy, I find. Oh, I think I put a little bit too much on that eye, but it's okay. Just blend it out. Mm, pretty. Yeah, I definitely put a little bit too much on this eye, but it's okay. It's fine. Fine. It's fine. So now I'm going in with Nearly Neutral. It's this color right here. This one is actually one of my favorites of the eyeshadows, if not my favorite, and I didn't expect that because it's brown. But I'm just going to put that on my outer corner. And I'm gonna blend that in to the Nearly Rose. I just love that Nearly Neutral color so much. Yeah, this Nearly Neutral color is definitely my favorite to put all over the lid. It's super pretty. It's a very strong eye look. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a lot of the uh, M Cosmetics Divine Skies 
eyeshadow palette colors, like specifically the ones from the Magic Hour palette. There we go. Now I'm gonna go into my lower lash line and I'm gonna take Nearly Apricot. I know so far it's looking a lot like Mel's cause I just, I just love that look. It's just super wearable and so nice. All right, I'm gonna take Nearly Apricot on the lower lash line. Just putting a few dots. So I don't want it to be too strong, you know, on the lower lash line. Just the one that's the chill, just kind of chill. I hope I don't have sparkles left on this. Oh, I totally do. Rub that right off. You know what? I'm just gonna use this pencil brush from this brand that I don't know what it is. It's like a, just a generic bamboo brush. I think I bought it at like Winners, Marshalls for whoever is in the, in the US. It's called Winners here. I think we have Marshalls as well, but it's a lot less common. Most people know it as winners. I'm gonna add a little bit more. This side. Oh, it's... This side is going down a little bit more than this side. Do you see that? Like I've brought the eyeshadow a little bit further down. So I'm gonna try and fix that using the nearly apricot and I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit more just to connect that eyeshadow and make it seem like a full shape rather than what I've done right now, which is make it kind of go downwards, which is fine. It's fine, it's just the side goes up while this one goes down. I've said it before, I'll say it again. They're sisters, not twins. All right, I think I did what I could, considering all things considered. Okay, so now the only one that we have yet to go in with is Nearly Berry. And in Mel's video, she took it as a kind of liner in the outer corner, which I loved, but for the sake of making this different and not a complete recreation of what Mel did, I'm gonna take a little bit of this in my crease and blend it out. I'm gonna be very careful with it because it's just, uh, uh. Okay, dig a little bit. I don't wanna. Eh. All right, and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this brush. I'm gonna start to work that in to the crease and kind of create a little bit of a smoky eye. I don't know how all that works. It just kind of made a mess, didn't it? I'm just trying to diffuse that out because it showed up very patchy and I don't know if it's because, I don't know if it's because I tried to layer too many of them on top of one another, but they're incredibly patchy. Okay, I'm gonna go take that off and then we're gonna try again. I lied, we're gonna try and save it. We're gonna try and save it, okay? We're just gonna add a little bit more and I'm gonna be a little more careful this time. And I know I'm basically covering up that nearly neutral with nearly berry, but it's fine, you know? Gotta do what you gotta do to make this work and not look patchy anymore. Okay, so if I'm noticing anything, it behaves a whole lot better with fluffier brushes. Because with the brush I was using before, it was very dense. It's like a very dense blending brush. You can see that. And I was kind of like dragging it and it wasn't reacting very well to that at all. So it seems like it's liking my big fluffy brush a lot more. That's what I would recommend for these because with that other one, it was just kind of dragging the color around and creating that like patchiness. It's much better now. Although I will say that color kind of took over my eye quite a bit, but that's fine. We're here to try things out. And you know what? I'm not mad because it still looks really nice. Like that berry blends into all of these colors really well. Like that's what I love about these. All of them just work really well together. Yeah, it's super nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go in 
on the other side now. I love how I was like, I'm just gonna focus this in the crease. No, you can't. That's, that's I guess, one criticism I would have is they're hard to control. They're um, hard to control and when you put them on, they're, you just kind of have to spread them out wherever they're gonna go. Like you can't really control what's gonna happen with them. They're a very kind of go with the flow product, which I don't mind. Like, it's like a little surprise every time I use them. Yeah, there we go. That one turned out better. No patchiness this time. Still a little bit on this side, but whatever. And I'm going in and I'm trying to blend this out as much as possible, taking it right up to the brow. I'm not really worried about putting that, like all this color on my eye space. Cause I kind of just like how it is. It's, it's messy. It's not um, structured, you know, it's not like, like there's still obviously a gradient to the eyeshadow, but it's not like super structured, you know? And I kind of like that. It's just very blended and diffused, which I personally prefer. I like my shadow to be incredibly diffused and smoked out like that. So works for me. And just because it turned really dark, I'm gonna take that Nearly Berry and I'm gonna take it on a angled liner brush um, and just basically match along the bottom. I'm taking it with my liner brush directly from the little applicator and I'm just gonna press that into the outer corner. And I'm not taking that all the way because I don't want it to be too much. Same thing on the other side. And I'm gonna take that pencil brush again and just smudge it out. So while these eyeshadows do kind of take the lead on your eye, like you kind of have to let them lead you where they wanna go, um, they are workable. Like they're very, very blendable and workable and you can shear them out the way that you need to. You're still gonna get a lot of color payoff. Like you can see that I had a lot of color payoff here, but they are still like shearable. Like I can still make them work even when I make a mistake, you know, as was evidenced by my patchiness on this side, which looks a lot better now. There's still like a tiny bit, but is there even a tiny bit? I can't really tell. It looks kind of different in the viewfinder versus here, but whatever. It's fine. I don't mind at all. Okay, so that's essentially the eye look we're gonna stick with. I am going to go do my brows very quickly and my eyelashes and I'll be right back. Hello, we are back. I have my brows on and my eyelashes mascarad, masked, mascarad. I also added a tiny bit of highlight to my inner corners and to my brow bone, just to kind of bring up those colors and make them pop a little bit more. We're gonna go into the next product, which is the Rare Beauty Melting Blush. This one is in the shade Nearly Neutral. It is a little magnetic closure, but that's what it looks like that is in the shade Nearly Neutral. And once again, Nearly Neutral is not the shade that I thought that I would like in any of these products. Like it was the one that I liked the least when I first saw them because I was like, oh, it's just brown. like. I have other browns, but it turns out that Nearly Neutral is my favorite color story in basically all of these products. And it's the one that drew me to it the most when I saw them reviewed. My preferred way of applying this is with my finger on bare skin. So I have tried this both with foundation and without foundation. And I much prefer using it without foundation, just like on bare skin or like on a tiny little bit of concealer, very low coverage sort of thing. Not because it like picks up the foundation or anything, but it just feels like a very natural looking foundation with minimal color payoff. Like it's not super pigmented. It's very easy to put on. Is an emollient formula. When you touch it, the warmth of your finger kind of really melts it. Like they're not lying when they say it's a melting formula. I'm just gonna put it on my skin for ya. The packaging also looks very much like a Polly Pocket, so I would be lying if I said that wasn't a big draw to the product for me. 
just felt very nostalgic. And I think they knew that just from the design of this product, it's too on the ball. It's too, or not on the ball, it's too on the nose for them to not have known that this was very much looking like a little Polly Pocket. But yeah, can you see just that really sheer wash of color? It's a very natural sort of blush. So if you are the type of person who likes a very natural, very light looking blush, this is probably the product for you. If you like a lot of color payoff, if you like a strong blush, maybe not because it's, it's hard to kind of get a really vibrant color payoff with this, if not outright impossible, just because it shears out so much. But yeah. I really like the blush. It's nice to use on those natural days when I don't really want to wear anything else. And it's just easy, you know? It's just an easy product. It is a lot more foolproof than their other blush, I will tell you that. Cause that one, that one, I love it. Like, I like that blush better. That's the, um, the soft pinch blush from Rare Beauty. I like that one more for the color payoff, but boy, is that one hard to put on right. The learning curve for this one is significantly more level. It's not as steep, you know? If the learning curve for this even exists, to be honest, because it's very user-friendly. I like a little bit more of a color payoff, so I tend to put more of this on, but if you want just like a really sheer wash of color, then you don't need to put on as much as I'm putting on, but I like having color on my cheeks. So I just put more on in very concentrated areas. It's a very nice blush, like so, so nice. I'll definitely get my use out of this. And the color is really beautiful too. I don't really feel the need to get the other colors because this this blush is nice, but it's not my favorite blush formula. So I don't really feel the need to get any of the other ones. This one's just fine. It's a very nice neutral color that I can use for like an everyday thing when I don't want to put anything else on except a blush. Yeah, it's just it's just really nice. It's a very nice product and I, I really like it. I'm gonna put a little bit on my nose as well. I love blushing my nose. It's also not the most long lasting product. I will say that as well. Um, I noticed that I definitely have to reapply this throughout the day. It doesn't last nearly as long as their soft pinch blushes do, which is fine. Like I'm not expecting it really to last just because of the nature of the product. But if you want something that's gonna last you quite a while throughout the day, then go with the soft pinch. But otherwise it's a lovely formula. So moving on to the last product in the Stay Vulnerable line, we have the Glossy Lip Balm. And I only got this in the shade Nearly Neutral because of all of the shades, this one just seemed most up my alley. It's a very neutral color. It's like a brown. There's not enough of a color that really shows up for me to merit buying all of them. So I only got one. I also just like this color the best from what I saw. So I love the formula of this so much. It's very, it's, sticky but in a good way it's soft and the hydration unlike their other lip balm the hydration stays on your lips with their other lip balm i find it basically sits on your lips but i feel my lips drying up underneath the product and i hate that i really kind of dislike their other product their other lip balm i love the color payoff of that product but i hate the the way that it sits on the lips because it sits on top it's not absorbed into the lips it doesn't really hydrate and i can feel my lips drying up underneath it like i'll put that on when my lips feel a little bit hydrated and then after a while i'll start to feel like scabs on my lips underneath even though i'm wearing the lip balm and it bothers me so much you don't get that with this product this one is a truly truly hydrating balm that makes your lips soft and plump and then even after you take it off that softness stays on your lips and the color payoff of this is actually very nice it's super sheer like it barely shows up but it is there and it is very nice mm. i've been using this so much There you go. You can see that the color is there. I'd be curious to see what the other colors look like, but 
This one I really, really love. Oh, it's got such a lovely feeling to it. It feels soft and pillowy like the souffles do. It's basically the lip souffle, but in a glossy format. It's a little bit sticky and it dries down sticky, but it's hydrating. If you don't like a sticky feeling, like if you really, really don't like a sticky feeling to your lip gloss, you probably won't like this, but it's very hydrating. And that stickiness is, it feels like hydration. And I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but the stickiness feels like hydration. Like my lips feel soft and not dry when I wear this, even though it's like sticky. And it's very hard to describe, but I love this lip balm so much. And for a lip balm, there's actually quite a high level of glossiness to it. Like I know it says it's a glossy lip balm, but it's not as high shine as you would expect from an actual lip gloss, but it is glossy enough that you can use as a lip gloss, but it's a little bit more muted and subdued, you know? It's not like va va voom gloss, but the glossiness is still there while hydrating your lips. It's actually kind of similar to the feeling that I got with the M Cosmetics lip glosses, the true glosses. It's a very similar kind of feeling on the lips, but I love it. And there you go. That is the finished look using all of the Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable products that I purchased. All of these products I think are in like the $30 range, the $30 Canadian. So I think the lip or the lip gloss is 26. Same thing with the eyeshadows, they're also 26 and the blush is 27. So they're all kind of in the same sort of price range. I honestly don't really know which products I like more than the others, just for the sheer usability, like everyday usability, I would say the gloss is probably my favorite. And then the eyeshadows, just cause they're really beautiful. And then the blush, but that ranking doesn't really mean anything cause I love all of them so much. And I love to use them all in tandem with each other. Like they're all gorgeous products and I would recommend each one of them as much as the next, you know? I think they did a fantastic job with this release. They're all incredibly versatile and useful products. And the fact that you can use them and they're approachable on a day to day with or without foundation, with or without a base underneath, like I think that speaks volumes to the versatility of this collection. So yes, overall thoughts, I love all of these. Huge success, I'm very happy. But that is it for me for today. It's a bit of a shorter video, I hope. If you're wondering where I got my earrings and my necklace, this tiny little garlic, if you can see it, I got them from a shop on Etsy called Blue Stockings Designs. I will link the shop down below in the description box. I will also link all of these products down below in the description box if you are keen to purchase any of them for yourself. I was on a no buy. No, that's a lie. I'm still on a no buy. I just went through some personal stuff and ended up buying these, but we're back on our no buy. We're not purchasing anything. We're doing good. So I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. The subscribe button is down below if you haven't subscribed to my channel already. I hope you're all able to stay safe and warm at this tumultuous time that we're living through right now. There's a whole lot of stuff happening in the world and we could all do with a little bit more kindness. I will leave links down below for ways in which you can help. So stay educated and stay informed. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next video.